Seattle Sounders 1, Real Salt Lake 2. I'm joined with Sticks 360, my guy. What was your thoughts on tonight's match? Well, before I say anything, I would actually like to give a shout out to Atif. Congratulations at the University of Miami. As Brian Smetzer would always say, he would want to give the credit to all of his staff, crack media staff. And I just want to say that before I speak on anything. Um, but congratulations and good luck on your studies in uh, Florida. I'm rooting for you. So, um, but today's game, it was as I, I live in Salt Lake. I know how this, this is. This is typical Salt Lake. Typical. They like to play low block, pop low ball. This is basically to get into nerds' heads. I would say. This is exactly what Pablo did with Colorado, but he just didn't have the resources that he had now that he has with Salt Lake. That's why he brought Zach McMath in 2016. We went against Pablo and Zach McMath when, uh, in, in Colorado. But now that he has better opportunities and a better, better system, because of course, like, you know, when you're crap, it's like, you know, like it's, you, you can't do nothing. Sorry about the crap. No, no, not really. Um, um, but it has to be also the, the responsibility is Garth. I believe that responsibility is Garth because ever since he came to uh, our us as this, as a, to our organization, he has never gotten a win at Rio Tinto Stadium, and that's a stat that like, I've been there for every single loss and to witness that. So Garth, literally, like this is unacceptable from you because you have literally used uh, like this club to literally like you know fulfill your failure at RSL, and I will have the balls to say that. RSL have done the double over us this season. We took their best player. We took their head coach. How do they keep getting away with it? They keep getting away with it because this is the way of, I will say this, it is us. It is not our job as the Seattle Sounders to literally, like, you know, accommodate the people that worked for the former racist owner under the racial, like, you know, ownership of Deloitte Hansen. And, of course, as the Sounders as us being the saviors of you know, soccer, and we revive everybody's career because, of course, soccer is welcome for all, and that's something I've learned about forgiveness. But, you know, it's it, it still is unacceptable because, like, the, we still need to break that dam. When we break that dam, because it hasn't been 2013 since we had Christian Tifford step on their field and we won. So it, we really need to get this done. No excuses. No excuses at all. Nine games remaining. We're outside a playoff spot. It's been frustrating. We saw a stat rolling around on uh, Twitter. In the past 10 games, we've lost seven. That was the same exact stretch of form we had under Siggy Schmidt in 2016. Then he ended up getting sacked after that final 10th game. What do we got to do moving forward? Nine games. We're outside a playoff spot. We pretty much have to go almost undefeated in these remaining games to hope to get a good playoff spot. We have nine games and we have a number nine. It started with the quest at Quest Field. We found the link to CenturyLink, and now we will illuminate our legacy at Lumen fucking Field. So you don't think there's anything to worry about? You think we'll finish the job with these nine games and squeak into the playoffs? We have a number nine and we have a number 10 that's won the CONCACAF Champions League. And we've also won, I do not care about the, no, 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 Cup FC. Um, uh, like to them, I have a message for them. Thank you for respecting Dr. Emmett Brown as the FRR Brian Smetzer, but at the same time, we're, we're still coming for LAFC and we're coming for everybody because they know who the heck we are. We are the gosh damn Seattle Sounders and you will respect us. You will hear us.